Okay, so we, we'll take a, a slight technical break. Um, so if your, your brain needs to just sort of rest for a minute um, in terms of absorbing a lot of technical details, this is, this is less technical um, and more focus on, on giving you some pointers and information about how to gain access to the ALCF and what the different allocation programs are. Um, I am, I, I, there's a great deal of information on all of these different ones sort of at different places out, you know, outside of this talk. But I really, as I said, this is meant to be sort of a touchstone. So you've heard all the right terms, you know what to go look for, and you know who to ask. Um, the one thing I, and it's relevant to, one thing I wanna make sure you're, you're aware of, it's relevant to our allocation programs is that we are a national user facility. And um, that has a very specific set of meanings that come along with it. And so what that really means is that we are mission required to support open science. And in particular for the leadership computing facilities, it is really tackling open science that you cannot tackle anywhere else. So that's really the, you know, what we strive to provide through both the Argonne Leadership Computing Facility and the Oak Ridge Leadership Computing Facility. Um, as you have already heard, and I'm not going to go through these details anymore, but, but this, this, these slides have, have multiple purposes. Um, we provide that right now primarily through Theta and including in that, and I know you've already been on this today, Theta GPU, which was a recent extension. So Theta is our primary production resource. Moving into 2022, um, we will have also available a new system called Polaris. And the reason I'm basically repeating these names for you is it's relevant as we talk about the allocation programs <laughs> and, what, and what to think about. And I think what's most relevant for Polaris is that our, for our primary um, allocation program, Insight, this is the real you know, allocation program that's delivering on our mission, Polaris will be new and available next calendar year. So for the Insight call that is currently open. And again, as I know, you've also heard about, we'll have Aurora coming in in delivery in 2022. And this will also be available through some of our allocation programs, including this year, including this year through Insight pro, uh, projects can ask for time. So keeping that in mind, we're looking at three systems over these different allocation programs that I'm gonna talk about now. Um, and so how do you gain access to them? And what are these allocation programs look like. Uh, and there's there's kind of different tiers, right? So we have pipeline, sort of pipeline projects through different types of, of awards. Things like getting started with, with through our director's discretionary, but even targeted types of getting started or acceleration programs that we have through the data science program and early science, and then moving into our major awards the Insight and ALCC. And every single one of these, I will describe to you and unwind all of the acronyms because this is an acronym heavy one. So maybe maybe that's the only part of this that, that will require your brain is tracking all the different acronyms we've created. Uh, so for a production resource at the ALCF and, and actually at the OLCF as well, the total time is broken down by delivering 60%. So you know, the bulk of the time on these systems is delivered to the Insight program. And so when you're considering what large chunks of time you might need, that's actually you know, the place to be thinking if you really need a substantial amount of compute or data capability to do your problem. Out of the remaining 40, 20% 20 is, is given to the Oscar Leadership Computing Challenge, which is run by our program sponsor, Oscar, in the Office of Science. I'll talk about that in some detail and what that means. And then finally, the last 20% has a much broader mission. That is run individually. You know, the ALCF runs our discretionary pool. We use this for a variety of purposes. We use this for you know, applications doing proposal preparation. Um, we use it for pre projects that might be wrapping up proposal uh, projects, right? They're previous insight prep projects and they have to you know, wrap up a few things, dot, you know, dot a few I's before they're done. But we also use it for strategic programs and to support things like the exascale computing projects. For the, I find the slide uh, actually a really valuable quick reference. It's kind of your, you know, if you have one thing you might want to take a glance at, it might help you figure out where you're going to fall 
in terms of your project's needs. And so it gives a sense, right, for the frequency, the mission of, of the programs, um, and really what their, their, their average size is. And so this gives you a sense that for Insight, we're looking at these high risk, high payoff science. Um, we're looking at a very relatively small number of projects, right? Between 10 and 15 projects that get, you know, even though Theta is not the biggest machine right now today, we're giving projects that are awarded through Insight very large fractions of time through that program. And you will see that also reflected through in Polaris and eventually on Aurora as well. Um, for ALCC, this is much more mission driven. So this, these are not necessarily pro projects that just have DOE funding, but it's projects that align with DOE mission. And it is not a program that we run unlike Insight and the director's discretionaries. And then the director's discretionary, as I sort of mentioned, it's really serving this much broader pool and it is meant to be sort of a running allocation. So at any point you can ask to have a director's discretionary time. They tend to be much smaller, um, but a lot more opportunity to sort of, you know, have, have a dynamic allocation, right, based on what you might need. And I'll just say, this is not the last of these. We'll, we'll talk about them in some more detail. I'm also gonna talk a little bit about a new track, a new component of the Insight program this year, our early career track. And so I'm going to work my way up. Um, as I mentioned, right, the discretionary program is really the first step for most projects when they're looking at time at the ALCF. It's available to anyone. Um, the primary thing is you just need to demonstrate some need for, for access to these high performance systems. And the ALCF reviews those, review them on, on a very regular basis. And they're normally around three to six months and in, in a small number of hours. The, what we tend to recommend to people, right, is you start small. If you demonstrate need, right, and you come back and go like, look, I, I used all of this, you know, I'm trying to work on a proposal, this is where I am, then, you know, we, we can give you more. But but it this is also a program where, you know, we don't have, uh, I'll say requirements, right, that you show up and get your work done, right? We're sort of giving a lot of people a chance to get access. So that's why we sort of have a common touch, a regular touch bases with, with the projects that come in through discretionary. One of our other programs to sort of accelerate and, and improve readiness of the user population is our data science program. And so this, that I did, I missed this. The call is not currently open and I apologize for that. Um, the last time I gave this talk, the call was open and I thought I'd caught all of these changes and I didn't. But, but the focus of the data science program originally came from trying to embrace and, and really support projects that had a large data component or a large learning component or basically very very different workflow from the canonical simulation high performance computing that we were used to seeing and and this started several years ago and and one of the biggest challenges we saw with many projects that fell in this category is they had technical hurdles to becoming ready to use a large scale system and so this program was really created to collaborate with us and, and help improve the readiness of those projects. And sort of there's, there's a symbiotic relationship here because as we collaborate with projects in the data science program, trying to improve the readiness, we get a better understanding of even what their requirements truly are and, and actually can do a better job improving the facility to sort of serve the whole community. Uh, but this is a program that has an annual call. It's a very small number of pro projects that go through this um, and is normally awarded for two years. So this is not a generally open one like discretionary, but this is a program that the ALCF specifically runs. And this is related to discretionary because it has the same readiness component as we're trying to move projects forward. And another category is our early science program. And currently there are are no, there's no, there's no open early science program call because this is what we run when we are deploying a new system. And so we have an early science program that is currently running for Aurora. And it's, it's very similar actually in how I describe the data science program. What we're trying to do is, is accelerate the scientific and engineering researchers readiness for Aurora. And by sort of improving their readiness, we get to do things like really test the software, test the hardware, improve our understanding of these of these coming systems as they're coming in, right? And so we don't start from scratch when they hit the floor, right? We have to understand what these systems are and how well they operate and what their problems are and what their bugs are, um, you know, 
<laughs> as at, you know, even before they're plugged in. And so that's what the, really, the, the early science program is focused on. What I can say is if you, you know, you keep, you keep your ears open, if you stay engaged with us, we will be, you know, acquiring another system and there will be another call for, for the equivalent program for the machine that follows Aurora. But this, as I said, I just mostly wanted this to be sort of a complete sort of picture of the different types of programs we have so you understood. I am plowing through this a little bit just to sort of give people also a chance for questions if they want. So, you know, um, somebody might need to interrupt me because I can't see questions, but um, there will, I will hopefully have plenty of time near the end. So that now I wanted to move into our major awards. So the, the larger fraction of time and, and sort of what we consider sort of production level awards, which are our Insight and ALCC programs. Insight, that, 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 that particular acronym is the Innovative and Novel Computational Impact on Theory and Experiment. And so this is uh, a program nearing in on 15 years old. And it is the program, as I mentioned, right, that serves our open science mission. Anyone is able to apply. So it's available to researchers in academia, industry, um, any research institution internationally, there are no requirements for funding. So you don't need to have DOE funding to apply. Any form of a source of funding can apply. The pr proposals are for one, two, or three years. And they tend on theta to be between one and two and a half million hours. If you recall from that chart I had up earlier, as I said, is a, is a really good reference to sort of have around if you want it. There tends to be between 10 and 15 of these projects that we have on Theta. Now that is sort of to give a sense, right? Theta is, as we said, a relatively small resource, resource for today. You can expect that that will be slightly larger on Polaris and, and Aurora, but see, even, even with Aurora, we're not gonna necessarily suddenly bloom to 50 projects. Our goal tends to be somewhere in the 20 and 30 range. And, and that's really because of this balance of sort of trying to deliver on this high impact mission, but also a balance of what staff we have and how we can collaborate. And I did not mention this, but Insight is jointly run by the Oak Ridge Leadership Computing Facility and the Argonne Leadership Computing Facility. So we have a management committee that's run by the program manager and this year that is me and the directors of science and the directors of the facilities. So we execute everything from the call to the peer review process and the selection process. When you are thinking about insight, there's really three criteria that you need to consider um, and that are considered in giving an award. And the primary one is, is the merit. The merit by far is, is the largest driving factor. Is this a research campaign that has a significant chance of impact, perhaps in your domain for a community? And, that can be through a variety of different ways. Impact is broadly defined. We define that sometimes as, you know, look, we made a great discovery, but it can also be, look, we've created this data set which has been sought after for a long time as a resource. So it's a very broad definition of impact. And we've had you know, projects with, with quite a range over the years. But one of the other criteria is also that you have a, a leadership criteria, right? So a computational leadership criteria. And what that means is that we're really looking for projects that cannot be done anywhere else. So if this is something that could be reasonably done on a university cluster, it might not be the best fit for the Insight program. Or perhaps there's something specific you need out of one of the leadership computing facility resources. Perhaps there's something specific in terms of memory footprint or architectural needs. And, and we're really looking to identify that as well when we're looking at Insight. And as I already mentioned, right, that there's, there's for eligibility, um, there are no requirements in terms of your funding source or where you're, you're living uh, at the particular time of applying. Um, there are a few restrictions which just have to do with, you know, we can't have like, for example, PII um, or, or classified information, things like that, that, that are some restrictions on just what data we can have on the system. But, um, but almost everyone should be eligible. I alluded to this, but there is a, a two-fold review process for Insight. And it's important to understand as you're thinking about your potential to apply and, and how you might consider what pro problems you might have are appropriate. The primary and most important part of the review process for a new proposal is, and, and, it, and for a renewal proposal is really 
the scientific merit. So we have peer review panels. So these are experts in, in the relevant domains that come together annually. Yeah, so this isn't like paper reviews where you know you're you're doing it independently. We have a, you know a roundtable discussion about all of the related proposals, and in that discussion, we are trying to identify the scientific and technical merit of the work being done. Um, and these this this really this slide sort of gives you a key sense of the questions that the reviews are being asked because we're also looking at say how are you trying to tackle that problem? Is the method or all the methods that you're using the right ones, right? Or, or the ones that you know are most effective for this particular problem. Do you have the right people in place now, right? To execute that work. Um, and then even given that, right? Is the reason, is the requested amount of resource compute or data or what have you, is that also reasonable given perhaps the merit or the type of proposal given the method that you're using, right? Does everything make sense? The second phase of the review is the computational readiness. And this is done by the leadership computing facilities. So this is done by the center staff. And here we're really looking for your technical readiness. And, and to give you the, the, the big overview that we're trying to answer with the computational readiness is we are doing a risk assessment. We're trying to understand that if this proposal were awarded, how long would it take for them to be ready to run? Does their plan make sense? Do they have their application ready? Do we think that they would be able to go on day one, like January one, your allocation starts? Could they go or would it take six months or would it take a year? Um, are they organized? Do they have experience doing this? And, and that's a very important for one for us to understand, right? So if you consider that we pay our sponsors, right, for, 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 the, uh, for this, this wonderful facility by giving them successes in science and engineering, through the use of the facility, we really want to understand in that portfolio as we're selecting awarded proposals, we want to understand what the risks are. So sometimes it, it makes a lot of sense to take a risk, um, but if our entire portfolio was very high risk, we need to be aware of that and to plan appropriately. Earlier, I mentioned that insight proposals can be one, two, or three years. If you are a new proposal, if you are a one-year proposal, you are always submitting a new proposal each year and you go through this same thing as, as on the left. But if you are a renewal proposal, you actually go through um, the sort of the same process with the same people, but the, the, the questions are, are slightly different. Normally a two or three year proposal is, is driven by the fact that you have a challenging enough problem that you need a longer window of time, right, to tackle it. And so really when we're doing a renewal, we're looking to make sure that you as a proposal has have stayed on scope of the original proposal. You're still working on basically that same problem and, and that you're meeting the milestones as you originally committed, right, when you wrote your first proposal. And, and if not, right, one of the things we, we try to make sure people understand is if you are a, a renewal proposal, you are worried that your scope is changing, that's a great opportunity to talk to me as the insight program manager, or me as the director of science at the facility, or, or even some of the scientific staff at the facility too, uh, to sort of understand, right, does this qualify as a change in scope or not, right, and, and do you have any advice on where to go. And the reason I point that out is we absolutely have projects that change scope. Right, because this is this is doing science. Right, very rarely does everything go to plan, um, and so so this is something that comes up, and that's but that's the primary thing we're looking for with the renewals, and similarly on the computational readiness for the renewals, we're really looking just to make sure that you're meeting technical milestones. You haven't run into a technical challenge that might prevent further progress, um, and that if you have hit some technical challenges, that you know you that you as a project know how to tackle them. All of that information feeds into the awards decisions, all of this. And, um, and th those awards decisions are made, as I mentioned earlier, by a committee that's the leadership computing facility directors, the program manager and the directors of science along with some senior management. So there's been a lot of interesting new trends and in insight, um, including depending on how, how recently you've looked at the Insight program, a large increase in projects that are data-driven or learning-driven. And that's a, also a loaded term at this point, but what I would maybe, it's another way I would say this, is projects that have additional components to their workflows um, that, that include large amounts of data 
for large amounts of learning and some projects that are coming in that are exclusively in those categories. And so it's been really sort of, of a broadening of the scope, right? Where, where we see um, a, a very large fraction of the proposals coming in are not just you know, in the simulation space, right? not by any means. Um, and actually to tackle this, one of the things that's happened in the past few years is we've introduced a learning panel. And this is to help assist the domain specific panels because it, not all of those panelists have the expertise in learning to understand or to be able to make an appropriate assessment about whether say these learning techniques are appropriate for this problem, um, whether these learning techniques are novel, whether they're just, you know, standard, like, yep, that, that will get the job done, um, or whether those techniques themselves have, you know, have a chance to, to also uh, uh, support the impact of the proposal. And so we also have, as I said, this learning panel that supports the domain specific panels as we're doing the reviews of each proposal. In this, this coming year, we have introduced the early career track in Insight. Um, and what that means is we are committing 10% of Insight cycles to those within the first 10 years of earning their PhD. And ah, this is a typo that I know, I know where this typo came from. This does not mean that if you've earned it on or after 2021, it's, it's 2011. Um, but the reason we're doing this is, is we have had a lot of, of early career applicants over the years within Insight, and some of them have been quite successful. But what we explicitly wanted to do was say, you know what, it doesn't matter if them have been successful or not. We want to highlight this. We want to make sure that early career researchers feel like they actually have a chance to be competitive um, and to be able to shine a light on those that are effective in competing within Insight and gaining access to, to the program. I will say that you know, projects will go through the regular computational readiness review and, and be sort of assessed by the same criterion. They will be in the same lists you know, as, as we're looking at top ranked proposals, but we will consider those that are identified in the early career track separately. And so the most common question that comes out of this is, is does that give me a competitive advantage? And actually it might, it really might. Um, that's not necessarily a promise, right? That your proposal will be awarded if you identify as early career, but, but I, I suspect it, it will give some opportunity where it might have been more challenging previously. So we're really excited about this. Um, it, is, it is not an onerous new part of the proposal process. It is a checkbox um, along with just a few sentences about how in particular this, the insight work contributes to your early career um, targets like, for example, if it's relevant, if you're if you're going for tenure or, or just establishing a research career somewhere else. Some statistics, um, mostly to sort of give you some trends, although they're not super exciting trends because they look very consistent from one year to another. Um, of, but what the awards the the award statistics have been in 2020 and 2021. Um, you are likely to see a much more dynamic set of statistics starting next year with Polaris. And then as Frontier and Aurora become available um, from year to year, things are gonna change a lot more rapidly. But with two very uh, established systems like Summit and Theta, we're pretty much hitting a steady state. So we've had a similar number of projects on each system in 2020 and 2021 with very similar average and median projects. Um, I will say that, you know, we. We, we are sort of consistently hitting this point where our projects are sort of very close, but we're looking at both the average and the median amount. Um, some people have asked, you know, the, the total number of hours on uh, awarded in each year is not quite consistent, right? So normally these look like the exact same number from one year to another, but there are two different things happening here for Summit. It's not that Summit really necessarily grew, but it was as, as more sort of as, as the system stabilized and there was a little bit of growth in Summit, but most importantly, as it stabilized, they were able to commit more to the program. And actually with Theta, we took a strategic gamble because of how small the system was. Um, with su such a small number of projects at 14, you get very worried about, you know, if, if two or three projects have a technical problem that couldn't be foreseen and are not successful. 
So we actually um, challenged ourselves to deliver a little bit more than we have historically delivered on theta. And it's just that that, you know, we did that actually both in 20 and 2021, but it's just wasn't, you know, quite the same from each year as we sort of turned down the knob a little bit in 21 as the 19.7 was actually quite challenging. All right, switching um, gears away from Insight, I am touch, going to touch on the ALCC. And, and then for the most part, I'm done and we can talk about questions. Um, the ALCC program is run by the Oscar office in the Office of Science. It is to support DOE program mission. The awards are much more variable so they're coming out of this 20% slice. And so they they, you know, not necessarily have that, they don't have necessarily have a big, big giant award mission that they're trying to, to support. Um, and so some years we get a lot of small ones, some years we get a few bigger ones. But the real requirement here is that Oscar is looking for projects that support DOE priorities. The letters of intent for this are often due in January and the um, and then the the announcements of new proposals will come around this time of year. So in the next few weeks, for example, we expect to hear the next cohort of ALCC awards. This works on a six month offset from Insight. So Insight awards are calendar year from January to December. These are July to June. And the other important thing about ALCC is they tend to be only one year proposals. They do not accept multi-year requests. And again, as I mentioned, this is just like the same slide. It's the same slide, same, same material, but I wanted you to sort of touch, I wanted to touch base for you right, sort of to show this to you because um, it really is everything we sort of talked about, but also puts things into more explicit numbers um, and gives you a sense of, of scale. All right, are there any questions? I'm not hearing any, Catherine. Um, but th th Everybody's heard it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, when is the application due? Has Inside? Been, yeah. They're due June 18th of this year. That's a Friday. So they're due by midnight on that evening. We also had this morning our first webinar for just, you know, it's sort of a, a, a much deeper dive into how to write the proposal and, and Q&A on it. There will be another one of these webinars um, and you can find that information on the Insight website, but it's doeleadershipcomputing.org. Okay. 